Who needs elemental reactions when you can cause massive damage alone with this deadly knight of Favonius? And this video is all about reviewing Eula along with the best builds for her. The biggest thing about Eula's playstyle is her burst, which more or less resembles the combo meter you would find in many action games, except you're building up a cryo sword that will explode and obliterate all the enemies in your way. Now, the thing that's most interesting about her burst called Grand Illumination is the fact that it only lasts for 7 seconds, and at that time, any way you can deal damage with her will give you a single energy stack to her temporary pet companion, the Lightfall Sword, which will follow her around and provide an additional resistance to an eruption. And once the time is up or you switch her out, a massive explosion occurs and all the energy stacks you build up will deal insane amount of physical damage. But just like with any combo meter, you need to have a solid plan when going into combat and for this matter, Eula's elemental skill acts as a buffer to increase the damage of the burst significantly and you can either press the skill to do a quick cryo slash to surrounding enemies, which will then grant you a stack of Grimheart that you can then use for the whole version of the skill where each stack gets consumed for additional damage in the form of descending ice world swords, but the more important thing would be the reduction you apply to enemies physical and cryo resistance, and luckily, you only need one Grimheart to get the debuff going. What's also interesting is one of her passives that will reset the cooldown of her skill when she activates Grand Illumination, not to mention it also provides one stack of Grimheart so you can quickly build up the two stacks and use the whole version for maximum effect that also gets rewarded even more by another passive if you consume both Grimheart stacks, which creates a Shattered Lightfall Sword and explodes for a nice amount of damage. So with all these synergies combined together, the end result is chasing those energy stacks for your Lightfall Sword explosion, and finding the most comfortable rotation for yourself is going to be the main objective when it comes to mastering Eula's playstyle. To help Eula achieve the best possible damage output, especially when it comes to her massive burst explosion, having the right weapons and artifacts is key to her true potential. And the first set of claymores that come to mind are any of the 5 stars, which all of them are going to be exceptional for her, with Song of the Broken Pines being the iconic weapon here, that helps her out not just with getting more physical damage bonus from the substat, but the passive effect also gives additional attack speed and will help her squeeze out more stacks for her Lightfall Sword Reckoning. But it doesn't have the same amount of influence as Staff of Homa, where it overshadowed other polearms with its insane damage output, and in fact, Song of Broken Pines along with every other 5-star Claymore are all great options. Even if something like Skyward Pride doesn't have an offensive substat, Eula's Burst still has a hefty cost and that energy recharge can help her out in a big way. But for those who haven't yet obtained their first legendary weapon, a very good alternative would be the Serpent Spine, provided you can keep the passive effect at its maximum state, which means you have no problem avoiding enemy attacks or have a chunky shielder keeping you out of harm. Way. And finally, for free to play options, going with either Prototype Archaic, Snow Tomb Star Silver, or Blacklift Slasher are all great picks, and at this point, you probably just want to go with the one that has the most refinements or has the best synergy with your artifact substats. Now, unsurprisingly, when it comes to artifacts, the newest Pale Flame 4 piece set is going to be the best choice for her. However, just because it is the top option doesn't mean it's the most dramatically powerful thing you can equip on her, and because this is a game that revolves around building a lot of characters. Spending your resin on a single domain isn't the cheapest thing to do, so if you're getting unlucky with obtaining the full set, you can easily go for a 2 set of Pale Flame and Bloodstained Chivalry instead. To be honest, you can even dust off those Gladiator's pieces if you haven't got any of the previously mentioned sets available, or you're simply not interested in farming up the domains. But in the worst case scenario, you can mix either of the 2 sets with Gladiators, since Claymore users do get a nicer benefit from higher attack percentage. Still, one thing is clear, you definitely want to get physical damage as your set bonus or bonuses, and the 4-piece Pale Flame is basically tailor-made for Eula's Grimheart stacking. Finally, if you ever built more than one character with a guide, you can pretty much expect the same substat and main stat priority you would see on any physical damage dealer. But the actual last thing to look at would be her talent leveling priority, and the general recommendation would be to focus on the burst up until at least level 8 or 9, and then move over to her normal attacks, while dumping resources into her elemental skill should be only done after you max out the other two. So when in short, Eula's entire build revolves around capitalizing on physical damage bonus, and that's mainly because of her insane burst explosion damage, and from the amount of stacks it can build and unleash, getting that huge number with zero downtime besides cooldown should be achievable without too much trouble. 
When composing a team with this Knight of Favonius, there's generally going to be a few key team members that will help you out with achieving her max potential. And the first obvious thing to cover would be an Electro Companion, so you can trigger those superconducts on your enemies, and without too much of a specific order of recommendation, adding Fischl, Beto, or Lisa are going to be your top 3 choices, and each of them offer their own little unique advantage, with Fischl acting as your sustained damage dealer, Beto giving you an awesome burst, and even a decent sub-damage support if you're facing off against a aggressive enemies that attack fast and often, so you can trigger her counter without getting juked like a fool. Or there's also Lisa, that can be the host of Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers to boost Eula's damage when switching. Now because Eula's burst has a very big cost attached, you will definitely want to get a so-called battery teammate from a cryo element for those sweet tiny elemental particles. And if you manage to unlock free Diona during the energy amplifier event, she's going to be an awesome battery helper, especially if you have the sacrificial bow on her, which lets you capitalize on even more particle generation. But besides the cat-like bartender, you can go for the deadly nun Rosaria, which can help you out with critical rate bonus from her passive, or there's also Ganya and Kaya, with the Coco Goat becoming a high priority teammate if you have her second constellation unlocked. And as for the rest of the team, it's basically the same thing as always. Putting in more buffers or debuffers is the path to ultimate destruction of your enemies, but if you have been building strong support damage dealers, they will surely won't hurt your overall team's performance. And if you're interested in some team composition exactly Examples. A good one that showed a lot of potential was with Fischl, Diona, and Bennett. That's really what you would expect from the mentioned details before, and acts as a great traditional team for a physical hyper carry role. The other variation tested was with Rosaria, Jungli, and either Geo Traveler or Albedo, which basically takes advantage of both resonances. Even if Cryo's status will get knocked off with crystallized reactions, there's still going to be some of it left on the enemies, so you can get that Cryo Resonance bonus for increased critical rate. But to be honest, this team is mostly focused on shredding enemies resistance with Zhongli shield and basking in the greatness of Geo Resonance. But if you're looking for a more daring team comp, a variation of the community dub fireworks team can be used together with Fischl, Beto, and Xingqiu. For some of that electro charge madness, just keep in mind this team is best utilized when the four stars have certain constellations unlocked. But as always, there's a lot of different teams you can build, and it's really a matter of the challenge you're dealing with, as we have seen many times now with the Spiral Abyss or events like the Energy Amplifier, where being dead set on a team comp won't bring much value unless you start improvising. Still, what's great about Eula is that she's a physical damage dealer, so more or less anything will get destroyed by her. It's only a matter of time of how often you can apply those superconducts or can get her buff with the rest of the team. Up until now, we've only had Razor as the one and true physical damage dealer, while some of the characters like Kaching, Fischl and Zhongli, and few more, were kind of based around physical damage, but their more dominant builds were focused on some other role or utility. So Yula's arrival definitely feels like a breath of fresh air, considering the amount of talents and constellations that focus on her physical damage aspect. In fact, one thing that's going to be out of reach for the big part of the player base are the constellations, and by even getting the first unlocked, it's going to be a major upgrade to her overall damage output, not to mention the last one, which as we have seen in the past with other characters like Child, it essentially removes the limiting factor, which in this case, would be the stack building for that spectacular explosion. But at zero constellations, which this whole showcasing has been based around, proves that Yule is basically in the same league as Ganyu and Hu Tao, with the only limiting factor being she's not able to utilize melt reactions too well, but at the end of the day, her selling point is her unique ability to deal with enemies by using the good old fashioned physical damage. And what's even better about her would be some of the small things, like the ability to retain Grimheart's stacks when switching her out, or the possibility to gather energy particles during her burst, which isn't something every character is able to do. Overall, Eula is the shining example of a true physical damage dealer with a pinch of cryo element added to the mix, and having a dedicated character for white damage is a welcome addition to any team, especially if you're facing off against multiple enemies with different elemental resistances. But the biggest thing about her is obviously her burst, which even with as little as few energy stacks still delivers a ton of damage, not to mention what happens if you can properly set up more than 10 stacks with superconduct buffs and debuffs. The only thing that sets her aside is the expensive cost attached to her burst, which to be fair isn't that bad considering you can still generate elemental particles when you activate it, so you can basically queue up the next one once the duration is over. Still, Eula is definitely one of the best hyper carries released in the game as of now, even if the biggest criticism you will hear about dedicated damage dealers is that they can get phased out more easily than supports like Venti or Zhongli, which is true for the most part, but at the end of the day, as long as you had fun causing those massive burst explosions, then you shouldn't worry too much about what the future holds.
If there's one thing we have learned so far, then it would be how effective a sneeze can be to your marketing campaign. But aside from this, Yula is going to be another character that's slowly pushing Genshin's boundaries and damage output, but at least this time around it's a physical damage dealer, which in all honesty, isn't something that's been very popular with the community aside from some of the niche team compositions. Now it's just a matter of time before we start seeing those videos of 5 million damage showcases popping in from Wales. But if you enjoyed this short video about Yula and would like to support the channel, then be sure to gently press the like button on this video and don't forget to subscribe by enabling the bell notifications on. For more light-hearted Genshin content and news, you can follow this channel on Twitter, link in the description. Thanks for watching the video and see you next time.